Welcome everyone to today's total body workout. In this workout, we're covering a little bit of everything. We're covering strength, we're gonna get your core, and then we're gonna finish up with some cardio at the end. But before we do that, we're gonna start off with a warm up. First exercise is squat shuffles. So, you're dropping down, hopping over, hopping over, kinda of like a monkey. Tap the ground if you want, and we'll show you a modification as well. Here we go, we have Anna and Ivy. And we're going, let's do those squat shuffles. So Ivy in the back is taking out the jumping, taking out the high impact for anyone at home that might have joint issues. So you're covering ground. This one's good because it gets your heart rate up, it fires up your legs, but it also stretches out those hips as you get low into that squat. When you're squatting, remember, chest is tall, weight is on your heels, and your hips are sinking down. It's not your chest that's sinking down, but your hips are sinking down. We'll do a little bit more. Looks good. And relax. From here, we're gonna warm up the upper body. Arm circles. So we're gonna start with tight circles going forward. Let's start right there. Nice and tight, warming up all those little muscles in the shoulders. The shoulder is such a complex joint. It's a ball and socket joint, meaning it can move every which way. But because of that, there's a lot of complexities to that, so we gotta get it fired up. Now we're going backwards, same thing. Head is forward, you don't want to be down here or anything like that. And you might notice that your shoulders burn a little bit from these warm-ups, and that's fine because we want to get everything lit up here before we get into the rest of the work that we have to do later. Now we're going to do big circles forward, and you might even feel your chest opening up here as you do these. A couple more, then we're going to go backwards. Keep breathing as you go through these warm-ups. And now we're going back to the lower body. Frankenstein kicks, hands up, right to left, left to right. And here we go. You want a flexed quad because the goal here is to have straight legs to stretch out the hamstring. So if you flex this quad, it helps keep the legs straight. So pull up using your core as well. Keep your core nice and contracted. We need that firing in order to do the rest of the exercises for today. Now we're going to go right elbow to left knee, crossing over, cross it, switch, cross it, switch. We're firing up the hip flexors, and go ahead girls, firing up the hip flexors, twisting out the back a little bit, stretching the back. For anyone that has a lower back issue, this is a great one just to get that area loosened up. There we go. And work with what you have. You know, if you don't have the hip strength or the range of motion to get all the way up there, just go as far as you can. Just make sure you're getting that rotation in. Now we're going to go feet shoulder width apart and we're doing hip rotations clockwise, okay? So big range of motion here. Here we go. Stretch out the stomach, stretch out the sides, warming up those hips, the hip joint, very similar to that shoulder joint, ball and socket joint, so there's a lot of muscles that need firing there. You might hear a few pops. My ankles pop when I do this kind of thing. We're going counterclockwise, switch directions. And you might feel some hamstring here as well. Now, feet go together, and we're warming up the knees. So, circles, clockwise circles with the knees from the side. Here's what it looks like. And again, you'll feel your ankles here. Might be some popping. Nothing to worry about. And go the other direction. A few more. And... We are all ready to go. Okay, so here we go with circuit number one. 
We have five exercises here. We're going to start off with push-up planks into push-ups. So you're going to get into this high plank position. You're going to hold for 20 seconds. When I say go, you're going to go into 10 seconds of push-ups. You can do regular push-ups. You can also modify the push-ups three times through. Okay? So let's start off with that. High plank position. Three, two, one, and go. So just hold that plank there, Anna. Oh. It's all right. Core is tight. Glutes are squeezed. Squeezing those butt cheeks. Ten seconds left. And then three seconds, we're switching to push-ups. Two, one, and go. Now Ivy's modifying the push-ups. Knees down. Anna is free to join her in the modification if she needs to, and we're going back up to high push-up, to high plank. <sighs> Looks good. Now something to remember on the push-ups is squeeze your shoulder blades together even when you're down. So throughout the movement, you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. It helps keep the shoulder in a pr protected position. Two, one, let's go push-ups. And they're doing a good job of keeping their elbows back. You don't want to be flared out up here. Two, one, and back up. Last round. 20 seconds up top. We are almost there. This is a tough way to start out the workout, but it does a good job of firing up your core, getting your upper body primed. Three, two, one. One, and let's get that last 10 seconds of push-ups. Get as many as you can here. There we go. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, so we're going from upper body to lower body. You're going to take one weight, and we're doing back lunges. So my left leg is forward, my right leg is dropping back. And the weight is also in my right hand. So I keep my weight on my heel as I drop down, stand up. My torso is tall, drop down, and stand up. Okay, a modification is to either shorten the range of motion or put the weight down and use no weight or both. Whatever works best for you. So I'm going to have the girls here grab their appropriate weights. Looks like we're ready to go. We're going 60 seconds each leg. Three, two, one, and go. Good. Torsos are nice and tall. Weight is on the heels. As you can see, their knees aren't jutting too far forward. You'll see that a lot of times with lunges, is people get up onto their toes, which is good for sports. It's good when you're, when you're trying to get into that athletic position. But in terms of protecting the knee, and keeping your body in proper alignment for this type of exercise, you want to keep the weight on that front heel. Driving through it, and that helps you recruit the posterior chain, so it helps you recruit your glutes and your hamstrings. And they're also getting a stretch on their right hip flexor. We've got about 10 seconds left. Looks good. Five. Four, three, two, one, and we're going right away into the other side. There we go. And this is, it's kind of a continuation of the warm up, too. So we went upper body, all the blood is flowing to your upper body, now it's flowing to the lower body. And there's actually really good cardiovascular benefits that come from that, from just getting the blood flow to just keep changing positions in your body. There we go, Anna's getting as deep as possible. Getting a nice stretch of the glutes. She's got the weight. She has the weight on one side, which actually makes it a little more difficult too because, because she has that on one side, naturally she's gonna be leaning this way, so she has to use her oblique on the other side to keep her stationary. So there's a lot of core imbalance involved in this as well. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Let's go weights down. Last exercise of circuit one. This is one of my personal favorites. It's simple, 
but it's a lot harder than it looks. It's called an airplane. So what you're doing is I'm on my left leg. I'll admit this is not my strong point here, this exercise, but I'm gonna give it my best. I get onto one leg, my hands are out to the sides here. And as you can see, I'm stumbling already. And then I'm twisting as much as I can. And then I twist the other way as well. If you need to modify it, keep your back foot either lightly on the ground or very close to the ground. We're gonna go 60 seconds each side. And here we go, three, two, one, and go. So one of the nice things about working balance is it actually translates to when you start working with the heavier weights. If you can get those stabilizers fired up, if you can work on your balance and your central nervous system, then when you pick up the heavier weights, you'll find that you can actually do a lot more than you could have done before. And this one, you can't see it right now, but if you look at their, their calf muscles, their shin muscles, everything is twitching, everything's shaking around like a rubber band, and that's good, that's what we want. And as you're in this tabletop position, again, focus on your core. Squeeze through your core and then have everything work out through that. We have about 15 seconds left. Twisting as much as possible. It's hard to find people that can do this the full 60 seconds without having to, you know, check back into the ground. Two, one, and let's switch sides. There we go. And your hamstrings will feel it more than you thought they would have on this thing. And Ivy's doing the modified version. And the main thing to keep in mind if you're modifying is even though you have that back foot on the ground, keep it lightly on the ground. And you can even test yourself by you know, lifting the back foot and then coming back down when you need to. Lift it and then come back down. Keeping the back flat, chest out. We have 30 seconds left. Keep focusing, if you can fixate your eyes on one point on the ground as well, that will help you maintain the balance. 15 seconds left. Looks good, don't forget to breathe. In five, four, three, two, one, and relax. So that is the end of circuit one slash continuation of the warm up. Take a quick little water break. You should only need about 30 seconds and then we're gonna jump into circuit two. Okay, circuit one is complete. We're jumping into circuit two, which is core training. So we're gonna start off simple with a front plank and we'll show you the modifications to this as well. So I'm on the elbows, knees are off the ground and then pelvis is tucked underneath, core is squeezed tight. To modify, drop down to your knees. If this is all you can do, that's fine. But what I'd like to see from the modification is kind of a back and forth between high and low. So hold the high as long as you can, drop down the low when you need to, okay? So we're gonna go 60 seconds. And we're going in three, two, one, and go. All right, so both girls are starting high. Ivy's gonna stay there. Anna, as she gets fatigued, is gonna drop the knees to the ground. So she drops down, but she still maintains that tight core. Now, what we can do to make this more advanced is this is easier. To make it harder, my elbows are forward, so I walk back and I stay in this position here. That's going to be tough to maintain, but if you're doing this workout and you have a crazy strong core, that's a way to make it tougher for you. We have 20 seconds left. I like to zone out when I do these front planks. I don't like to be thinking too hard, just get in a relaxed state of mind, yet keeping the rest of my body tight and contracted. We're down to 
five, four, three, two, one, and drop down and relax. Not gonna waste any time going into a boat position. So I'm leaning back, my chest is out. Very important not to round the back on these. And then what you can do is hands off the ground, raise up, hold that position right there, okay? The modification is gonna be to keep the heels lightly on the ground. And if you need to modify it further, just lightly set the hands next to your glutes, okay? So it's another 60 second one. We're going in, three, two, one, and go. Oops. Okay, so what I'm gonna have Anna do now is drop her heels to the ground, but they're there very lightly. Okay, and then why don't you demonstrate hands next to the glutes, just lightly there. And it's the same rule that applies for the front plank. Get into the harder version and hold it for as long as you can. And then, you know, if your hip flexors are tighter, you'll even feel this down into your quads. If you're feeling it there, then just check back into the ground lightly and then come back into it. It's another exercise where you want to stay relaxed in your mind, just kind of zone out. I, you can even close your eyes when you do these if that helps you. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, now we're going into a side plank. So, my elbow is directly under my shoulder. Lots of different ways you can play with the side plank. So what I'm gonna have Anna do is she's gonna do a modified version where her knees are on the ground and she's just lifting her pelvis up. You can see there's space between her hips and the floor. And then the other thing to keep in mind is make sure your hips are forward so your glutes are squeezed throughout. Ivy's going to go feet stacked, hand up in the air, 45 seconds, okay? To modify this, you can stagger your feet, you can put your hand down, do whatever you need to do. We're getting ready to go. Three, two, one, and here we go. 45 seconds. Hips are high and tight. That's the key word here, high and tight. Key phrase, nice and relaxed. And it's modifying. And with these side planks, you'll find that one side is gonna be easier than the other. That's how it is for most people. And typically, if you're a right-handed dominant person, it's actually gonna be easier on the left side. Because if you throw a baseball or whatever you do, that's your plant leg. Because it's the plant leg, your core oftentimes is more stable on that side. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. We're going to switch right away into the other side. Three, two, one, and we're up. Good. Okay. Any change in difficulty from right to left? A little bit. Good, we're zoned out. I'm gonna jump in here. Everyone knows what they're doing. So I'm gonna get a little plank action in myself. I'm here, my hand is up. Now if you're ultra advanced on this, you can even lift a leg up and hold it like that for as long as you can, or you can go up and down with it. Lots of different tricks to make this more difficult. And there are a million other side plank variations, but we're sticking to the basics right now. And time. Okay, we have two more exercises in this circuit. We're going into a torso twist, a Russian twist, cherry picker, whatever you want to call it. So you're back into this boat position, but your knees are bent a little bit, heels off the ground. And I'm going hip to hip. I'm actually even tapping the floor. And we're going for 60 seconds here. The modification, similar to the boat, is just to keep your heels on the ground. Three, two, one, and here we go. Now these twisting exercises, I like these because you're getting the internal core work from being in this, in this boat-like position. So you're getting those internal stabilizers, but then you're getting the external abdominals and the obliques 
with the twisting motion here. So it's kind of like you're getting a functional and the, the glamour muscles, the show muscles on top of it, which we all want to some extent, right? Okay. Now, last 20 seconds, let's pick up that speed. There we go. As fast as you can, side to side, crank it out. There we go. Good, pick it up, Ivy, a little bit faster. 10 seconds. In five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Last exercise. We have twisting mountain climbers. So, high plank, knee to elbow, but you're going left knee to right elbow. So I'm getting this twist and then twist. Here's the regular version here, here, advanced version, boom, boom, boom. Modify, you're just going slow and then you're checking out, resting when you need to. We're gonna go 60 seconds. Three, two, one, and go. There we go, so the pelvis is turning on this one. And this is, it's kind of a similar effect as the torso twist because you're getting the core stability but then you're getting the twisting motion which is so effective for sculpting the abs. All right, they're cranking hard. Thirty seconds. There we go. And this is a cardiovascular move too. Your heart rate is going to get high from this. Your shoulders are going to start burning. Last 15, here we go. Stay down in it. Make sure your hips don't rise up too high. You want a nice flat plane here. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Okay, we are done with circuit two. Okay, last circuit of this workout, we're doing cardio. We did our strength, we did our core, now we're gonna burn it up at the end. Starting with side shuffles. So, you're getting down low, and you're shuffling side to side, tap down, shuffle, tap down. Use the space that you have in your living room. If you don't have a lot of room, then just shorten the distance. We're gonna go 60 seconds, we'll show you a couple different versions. Here we go, three, two, one, and go. There we go. So Anna's booking it side to side. She's staying low. That's the main thing. We want you to stay low. Ivy is showing the modified version, just kind of stepping side to side and then squatting. So with anything, just do what you can with it. As long as you're as you're pushing yourself, as you're working hard. Okay, so this is, you know, it's kind of like basketball practice where we used to do those side shuffles. And you can do that too. You can put your hands out to get a little shoulder burn. Tap down, tap down. A lot of different ways to do this one. We're coming up on 40 seconds, so we have 20 seconds left. There you go. You just want the quick feet, but you want to stay light on your feet too. You don't want to be pounding the ground the whole time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and good job. Okay, from here, we're turning to the side. Left leg forward, right leg back, hands up. Knee to your hands, come back down. Use those abs, crunch into it, come back down. Okay, option one is just nice and slow here. Option two is just to fly through it. 30 seconds each side. Three, two, one, and go. There we go. So, you want to go fast, but you also want to land lightly with that back foot. But what you can do to make this even more challenging, step further back, lunge lower, and then come up, back lunge, back lunge. Okay, but 
The main thing is to make sure you're under control with this. We're switching in three, two, one, right to the other side. There we go. We have both versions going. Pull with your abs. Keep it contracted. You don't want it to be just hip flexor. You want to use the stomach. Here we go. Finish strong. Ten seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and time. Okay, from here, we're going into floor touch jumps. So drop down, tap the ground, and then jump up. Try to stay on the one leg, tap down, jump up. To modify, just kind of tap down and stand. Tap down and stand. 30 seconds each side. Here we go. Three, two, one, and go. There we go. So this really lights up your hamstring. It works your balance. And then you get the quad explosion on the way up. But the main thing is it, that it does is it gets your heart rate sky high. We have 10 seconds left on this side, then we're going to switch. Three, two, one. One, and let's go to the other side. There we go, looks good. And you know, like anything, your left leg is different than your right leg. When I'm balancing on my left leg, I'm, I'm not bad, I'm actually pretty good. But when I switch to the right, it's a different ball game and I'm stumbling all over the place. So you'll probably notice that when you're doing these. And then keep your leg, you want a slight bend in there, but if you, if you lack flexibility and range of motion, then you can do a bigger bend. Two, one, and time. Okay, so three exercises gone. We just have one left. It's the burpee. It's the one that everyone hates, but it's good for you. So I'm dropping down. I'm hopping my legs back, forward, jump. Okay, to modify, you're going to go back. You're going to go forward and stand. If it's too much for you to get down like that, just get into high speed squats, okay? Here we go, 60 seconds. Finish it strong, three, two, one, and here we go. There we go, we're working core, we're working lower body, we're working our hearts, and you're working flexibility as you drive your feet forward and you get down into that squat. If you're lacking range of motion, another thing you can do is you can widen your feet so then when you jump forward, you're in a wider stance and you don't have to get quite the stretch in your hamstrings. We're over halfway there already. Keep pushing yourself at home. Little breaks if you need to, but we're almost there. So just push through. Okay, 15 seconds. There we go. Modify, step back, step forward, stand. Five, four, three, two, one, and we are done. Nice job, everybody. What we're gonna do right now is just start cooling it down. So we're just jogging in place a little bit here. Never wanna just completely stop and crash when you're done. You wanna keep moving a little bit. So just light jogs into a little jumping jack. As you can see, it's not a full range of motion, jumping jack, just kind of moving the arms and the legs. From here, we'll go into leg kicks. And gradually, just lower the kicks down until you're basically just shuffling back and forth. Okay, from here, feet together, side bend. So, Kick the hip out to the side, stretch the right side of your body, look up towards your hand, and just breathe. And then we're going to drop down into the other side. Solid work though. It's always fun to finish with those, those high intensity intervals of cardio at the end. Quad stretch. So. Grab the foot, pick out a reference point, or just use a chair or a wall. The knee comes in 
tight towards the other knee, and then your glutes squeeze forward on that right side, and just hold that. Heart rate should be slowing down a little bit. Now we're going to the other side. And what's great about these total body workouts is you get, you know, if you push yourself to an intense enough level, you'll get that nice afterburn effect. You know, when you do the steady state cardio where you're out or you're jogging or you're on the elliptical, you burn calories while you're on the piece of equipment, but then it kind of stops when you're done. And this kind of stuff, it keeps going. So wide stance, let's drop down and stretch the hamstrings. Just hang, you can either put your hands on the floor or fold them, keep your quads flexed so the legs stay straight. Just relax right here. You can rock it back and forth a little bit. Take both hands and put them towards your right foot, the right side. Both hands towards the left. And now you're going to put your hands to the ground, take your right leg, drop it back behind you, and you're taking your inside arm right here and dropping down. I'll turn to the front so you can see at home. You're just kind of sinking down. We work those hips pretty hard, especially at the end. So you want to stretch these out to keep them from locking up. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, switch the legs. Right leg is forward. Now what you want to make sure you're doing is you want to get a straight line from knee to ankle. So you don't want to be forward here, but you want to be right here and then sink that inside arm down. And then we'll drop back down into a child's pose. Breathe through this, sink your hips down into your heels, lengthen with your hands, and hold this for as long as you want to. If you still feel tight, just go through the stretches again. And thanks for joining us, everybody.